Decisions, decisions, decisions. Picking up eggs from the grocery store has gone from grabbing a household staple to making a minimum of three decisions. Do we want white, brown, or blue eggs? Do they need to be organic? What about cage-free? There are so many options, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but how are they different? In this video, we're decoding the different types of eggs you can find in your grocery store. Hi, I'm Alyssa from Southland Organics, where we are making it a priority to bridge the gap between agricultural producers and consumers. For more information on ag literacy, check out southlandorganics.com. For decades, eggs have been a staple in kitchens across the globe. In the United States alone, egg consumption per capita is more than 286 per year, up more than 15% in the last 20 years, according to the USDA. This high level of consumption has only been made possible by increasing hen populations and improved egg production. According to data published by the Egg Industry Center, egg production per hen increased more than 12% from the year 2000 to 2020. In 2000, hens laid an average of 264 eggs per year, and now they lay an average of 296. These productivity changes are thanks to research and improvements in nutrition, genetics, and management. As the egg industry has made strides toward more productive farming, new challenges have arisen as well. One of the biggest challenges for the modern agriculture industry is matching consumer demand while catering to consumer preference. But let me explain what I mean. It will always be the producer's responsibility to provide for the consumer. But in the world of agriculture, this relationship is complicated by the involvement of animals. And sometimes an additional layer of confusion is added during the promotion and sales of an animal agriculture product. One example of consumer-driven change is the growing popularity of brown-shelled eggs. After decades of producing white-shelled eggs due to their perceived cleanliness, consumers began showing an interest in brown-shelled eggs with the idea that these are a more natural option. Due to this change in preference, production companies pivoted quickly to establish adequate supplies of brown-shelled eggs. Most recently, consumer concerns have been centered on animal welfare and housing. Conventional layer housing was established in the early 1930s when egg farmers started moving their layers indoors to protect them from weather, predators, and disease. Not long after birds were moved inside, it became standard practice to keep them in wire cages to improve animal welfare, cleanliness, and access to feed and water. From the 1940s to the early 2000s, this was normal for layer housing. It was around 2006 when we started to see the first guidelines for cage-free layer housing in response to consumer interest in organic production and cage-free systems. And since then, the options have only grown. Organic, cage-free, pasture-raised, environmentally enriched, all stamped on labels and tossed into the egg section of your favorite grocery store. But what's the difference? Let's focus on the top three. In the U.S. today, 70.7% .7 of laying hens are housed in conventional housing, 22.5% are cage-free, and the last 6.8% are organic, according to the USDA. Now, we already talked a little bit about that first option, conventional cages. In this type of housing, six to seven hens are housed in each wire cage with continual access to feed and water. In some cases, the cages are enriched with perches, dust baths, and more space per bird. This is the option that allows the producer the most control in terms of environmental conditions, health, and injury. Studies have also shown that this is often the most efficient housing system in terms of egg quantity and egg quality. Now the second option. Cage-free systems are different in that birds are allowed to roam freely within their enclosure with access to the floor, but they are still enclosed in areas referred to as aviaries. These aviaries are multi-tiered open front cages, often with perching spaces. While this does allow improved opportunity for bird activities such as dust bathing, foraging, and flocking, it also presents a higher risk for disease spread through a flock, increased pecking and social hierarchy, and excess egg waste. The third option is organic. Birds raised under organic designation are nearly the opposite of conventional housing. 
To be certified organic under USDA regulations, the birds must be housed in cage-free housing with seasonal access to the outdoors. This means that their indoor environment can be exactly the same as a cage-free house, as long as the birds are capable of going outside. Organic also means that the chickens must be offered certain types of feed. This style of housing leaves the most room for predation, disease, and egg loss due to uncontrolled environments. As these new housing options have emerged, there has been extensive comparative study to determine which are the most conducive to animal welfare, health, and productivity. Some of this research has found that conventional cage systems allow for more efficient feed consumption with lower incidences of concerning health events like bumblefoot, foot pad lesions, body wounds, and tibial breakage. When looking at factors that indicate whether or not chickens are experiencing prolonged stress, guess what? Across the three options outlined above, there was no difference. Conventional, cage-free, and organic environments all created the same level of stress on their inhabitants. So which one is actually better? That should be for you to decide. But in some states, your options are becoming more limited. Recent legislation, such as California's Farm Animal Confinement Initiative, or Proposition 12, limits options for egg production. Under Prop 12, all egg or egg products sold in the state of California must be from birds housed in confinement systems that comply with specific standards of freedom of movement, cage-free design, and minimum floor space. This would mean that any farms in the state of California or farms selling into the state of California are required to shift their production to cage-free, an expensive and difficult process. Changes in egg production over the last couple of decades have been driven primarily by consumer desire to buy a product that's representative of their views on animal welfare and husbandry. The industry's efforts to accommodate these needs have led to a supermarket shelf with options for everyone. But there's been a lack of education on what those options actually mean. I hope this video has helped clear it up for you so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. One thing is for sure, whether you choose free range, organic, or conventionally produced eggs, we are all so lucky to have farmers that are dedicated to providing us with a nutritional staple that we've enjoyed for decades. If you have any questions about our poultry product line or what we can do for you, you can reach us at 800-608-3755 or success at southlandorganics.com. As always, thank you for watching.